Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am Sri Chandan, Sri Chandan Venkat. Uh, in today's class, I would like to explain uh, how we need to proceed with HyperMesh, where we need to start, what are all the things we need to have, and what are all the things we, as a prerequisite we need to learn before starting HyperMesh. And uh, I'll also explain you the step by step procedure way how you need to proceed because uh, if you compare online, uh, there will be ne never a strategy where uh, you can learn by step by step procedure but I'll explain you I'll help you to learn the things in a sequence so that you will be able to make it uh, or sort it out in a correct way and so the first and foremost thing the first and foremost thing is so always always start with the basic things like so first thing is always start with the conceptual things always learn strength of materials strength of materials and uh, the next thing is finite element analysis because we are learning hypermesh so fem will always help you to uh, make the concepts very clear and strength of material FMHM we call it as FMHM fluid mechanics so these are the three different topics you need to learn as a prerequisite before going to the analysis sometimes uh, vibrational analysis is also used sometimes vibrational analysis is also used so it might help you these are uh, three concepts three four concepts will always help you to understand the better and it will enhance your skills as well right so let us proceed so these are the things you need to learn as a prerequisite and in hyper mesh <clears throat> please uh, please be clear with why we first th first thing when when you are starting with hyper mesh first thing why we need to mesh why we need to mesh so you need to be clear with why we need to go for meshing and what is the purpose of meshing yeah so that is what the first thing and what are the type of mesh what is the type what is the type or type type of mesh mesh suitable suitable to the type of component type of component so I'm helping you out I'll help you out with these two cases because most of the students will be asking these two doubts all the time so I thought of making a video on them and make you clear and well I'll discuss those two answers now and I'll explain you right so in this video I already told you for if I take complete body complete body has how many degrees of freedom in, in one perspective I am explaining this question there are a lot many perspectives you where you can explain meshing this is X direction this is Y direction and this is Z direction so body will be having X direction Y direction Z direction so a body can transfer translate in this translate in this translate in this rotate in this rotate in this rotate in this right am I right so there are six degrees of freedom so six DOF every body will have six degree of freedom and they in that three are rotational three are translation so they can move in move and rotate in the XYZ axis if you take a complete body so what happens means there are six degrees of freedom likewise what is the purpose of meshing means see if I take my hand if I take my hand what happens So let us, I'm very bad at uh, drawing, so please uh, uh, be clear with this. This is my hand. So what happens is, for every hand, you have got 27, 27 DOF. So if I say a body has got maximum 6 degree of freedom, now I am seeing 27 degree of freedom. How come it is possible? Yes, it is possible. Why? Because our hand has got different motions like thumb has got its own direction 
index finger middle finger ring finger and uh, pinky has got different motion so the motions individually calculate to be having 22nd degree of freedom likewise the body has infinite degree of freedom so infinite degree of freedom can be specified in two different geometries likewise we have two different geometries that is global coordinate system global coordinate system and local coordinate system so local coordinate system global coordinate system always explains you the body will have six degrees of freedom but whereas in local coordinate system you break them into small pieces you break them into small pieces see as this is a a shape which is irregular but when you cut it into equal parts what happens you can see this is a, a square shape so you can find you can easily find the results for these kind of shapes right instead of using irregular shapes so that is one way where you can help so what happened this infinite degree of freedom can be brought into finite degree of freedom with the help of meshing so and you can have a correct shape as well so for a refined results like if I take a square you can obviously say area is equal to length into width or side into side a into a but if I give an irregular shape you can't find it but if you split it into equal parts or unequal parts and the small parts acts as square so individually you are finding for small part and you are integrating it that is what we call it as interpolation so this we call it as interpolation so basically you do this for small particle and you integrate throughout the body so where you can get the complete results so this is what one of the purpose for meshing and uh, this is one of the purpose and for while meshing what happens is it will be easy for you to um, analyze for the next step so we have already in the previous classes i have discussed that uh, pre-processing post-processing and processing are three steps right after meshing you will be sending it to analysis purpose so right now we are not going to concentrate on analysis part but I'll explain you what kind of mesh is suited for what kind of objects right let us take 2d mesh 2d mesh and 3d mesh are the two different meshes you have so in 2d mesh 2d mesh 3d mesh so in this also you have two terms like first order first order and second order in this 3d also you have two types that is first again second order all what's a first order states is if at all you have a triangle this we call it as triad tria. if at all you have a square like this this we call it as quad so what happens is here you have a node 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 node so how many nodes are there one two three for triad one two three four for quad so so this is of first order so whenever you are saying any 2d element of first order it has n n nodes but whenever you are saying the term called second order it has nodes between midpoints so this will be converted into second order similarly quad quad is also a 2 2d right so what happens you will be splitting where, wherever you have two point there will be a, a midpoint added into the system so that is of second order similarly 3d as we can see this is of this is a cube like structure right so So this is cube like structure right so this we call it as hex hexa element so here you have nodes so at every corner you have nodes right so these are eight nodes basically that are that is of first order and second order can be stated by adding midpoints at the between so this is of second order so in in quad element it will be converted to hexa and triad will be converted to tetra mesh as you can know the tetra will be like this 
like this here you have a node node this is of first order and if you add nodes in between that will be becoming a tetra so basically this is this is of 3d this is of 2d 2d mesh so i hope you guys are clear with what kind of mesh we have and 2d mesh is especially used for BIWs, BIW. So BIW stands for body in white. These are basically used for these kind of structures. And on mid surfaces, you can on mid surfaces you can apply it. Right. And 3D, 3D mesh is used for casting components casting components so in this also you have two types hexa mesh is used for simple geometries simple geometries and tetra mesh is used for complex geometrics complex geometries so this is the basic difference between hexa mesh and tetra mesh whereas 2d can be used for any kind of purposes like it may be shell mesh body in white so these are the special intricates where you can apply it for and for a complete solid model you can apply it as a hexa mesh or tetra mesh if the component is very simple you can apply it for uh, apply hexa mesh to it and tetra mesh for complex so because tetra can fix anywhere in the complex geometry so that is the main uh, advantage of tetra mesh but uh, you will get uh, accurate results with the help of hex mesh yeah this is all about how we need to proceed and what kind of mesh we have it right and i i hope you guys understood it uh, thank you and in the next lecture i would like to explain where it will be used and what is the procedure for learning hexa mesh sorry uh, learning the procedure for hypermesh right thank you